some of these certifications in the industry have been either shrouded in secrecy or are just full of a bunch of bullshit, and both are wrong. And what Bill's done is he's come in and he's like, look, I'm going to pull the bullshit out. I'm going to teach you how to do this in the education process over a six-month period in an academy for a very affordable rate. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick, and there's Matt Reynolds. And today we have Reed Smith. That's a good Southern name. Was Reed your mom's maiden name? Unfortunately, no. Oh, well, that's that's one way that they like to do it down there. Uh, and then Bill Hannon. Bill's webcam is kind of pointed kind of up a little bit, so it's just his head, and he's got a hoodie on. It kind of looks like a like a really heavy turtleneck, and he's looking he's looking <laughs> he's looking a little like Uncle Fester. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, a floating Uncle Fester head. Yeah, it looks like he's just kind of floating. And when, it's a there black hoodie, so now it looks like a druid's habit. Yeah, <laughs> now he looks like a jack druid, like, de- like death. <laughs> yeah, so I, I wouldn't want to see that in the back alley. I'd be like, damn it! So all these hard years of living, it's finally coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's just Bill. Just Bill. Just, just Bill. <laughs> Oh, why, so, why so does you death think. have a Coors Light in his hand? It's so weird. Because <laughs> what God, else would not death? weird at all. That's, uh, that's exactly obviously, what I would expect. Obviously, yeah. Jesus Jesus isn't going to drink Coors Light. So. Coors Light and a pack of Marble Reds. I, I actually <laughs> that's think... That's what death's carrying around, I guarantee it. I, I actually think death drinks soy lattes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, I've, got a big, I've got a big weekend, Matt Reynolds. You do? Tonight. Tonight's a Dwight Yoakam concert. Is it? And at the casino or where at? It's gonna yeah, he's gonna be at a casino here in Tulsa, of course. Oh oh he's at the Hard Rock? Is that where he's at? Uh, no, he's gonna be at the River Spirit Casino. Oh, which yeah, is owned, signs for that. Yeah, I've which never is seen uh, that casino though. Pretty close to the house here. So I get to go Wait, see no, Dwight. No, last, we stayed there. Did Rachel and I stay there when it flooded, right? Didn't yep. we stay there last time we went and visited you guys? That's right. That's right. Yeah, when the water right was right on the river. Yeah. And then and then tomorrow night at the Claremore Elks Lodge, I'll be cooking dinner. My buddy Dallas, Shell, and I were cooking schnitzel and uh, nice. and uh, Love schnitzel. Jaeger sauce and all that stuff for you everybody. Just a big, are you going to wear like suspenders and wear the hat I'll, and Good Morgan and all that stuff? I will stuff? probably wear overalls. <laughs> that's, and uh, that's your version, that's the right. Oklahoma version of German suspenders. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Saturday's training and, you know, pool and going to have people come over. It's good times. That's that's about as good as a NFL football game and a and a steak and a and a beer and <laughs> right. anything else that comes along with it. So uh, so we got Bill and Reed on the show today because uh, it is the one-year anniversary of the Coaching Academy. It's crazy. It's, it's one of those things, though, where it's gone by fast, but it also seems like, you know, October 1st when we launched seems like five or ten years ago to me. Oh, yeah, for sure. Lifetimes ago. Yeah, I was telling I was telling Rachel the other day that Thinking about like teaching junior high school, which was seven or eight years ago for me, literally feels like four lifetimes ago, and uh, certainly lots lots has happened since we've launched the uh, the coaching academy. But gosh, man, it's been super successful, and we've got Reed on here because he's one of the guys that went through it and has uh, come out on the other side and, and been real successful. And so, uh, wanted to kind of show both show our listeners perspectives, uh, both from the guy that had the original vision for it, which is Bill. And uh, an example of someone who's been all the way through and has interned for us at at Barbell Logic, and that's Reed. And so, Bill, what was the what was kind of the beginning of that the academy? Like, what what was the need that you saw, the gap that it filled? Yeah. So, I, I was just thinking about this the other night. Like, I I had gone to um, another seminar to to audit and kind of sat through it, and I was there with with one of my friends, and like he he didn't pass. And, you know, I watched all the platforms and everything and it's like, okay, like what, what is, you know, I started thinking like, what is going on in my head when I coach that these people that aren't great coaches yet aren't thinking about. And, you know, that was kind of the, the genesis of, of everything. Like, you know, set me on this path of like figuring out like, okay, exactly what am I doing on the platform when I coach? And and if I can break that down myself, I can teach it to somebody else. 
And then you can flip that, you know, the, the mantra for the longest time was like, well, we can't, we can't create new coaches. It's like too much of an art, too complicated. We can only identify people that have been doing it long enough that they've, you know, been lucky enough to get good at it. And it's like, no, I don't, I don't really think that's true. Like there's, there's tons of professions out there that are very, very, very complicated. And you have to have both a high level of knowledge and a high level of skill to be not just good, but just like serviceable at them. Yep. And yeah. almost all of those, all, all of those professions have some kind of training program to get you better. Yeah, I always thought it'd be, how interesting would it be if like brain surgeons, which is about the most complicated thing you could do. Like, listen, we don't make brain surgeons here. We just identify brain surgeons who have finally learned how to stop killing people. <laughs> right. And uh, they've got enough experience to not kill humans. To, to be, to be, fair i think that the idea hasn't been that they couldn't be trained i may be wrong that may have explicitly been said Can i think they just didn't want to be right. bothered like we're just going to identify people that have already already sure. been working hard and are already ready to rock and we're just not going to work on the nurturing piece is that true well the 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 thing is from the student's perspective it doesn't matter right it's like, we're not going to train you either way. It doesn't matter if we can or if we don't want to. It's like, we, we're not going to help you. And it just it, you know seemed like there was such a hole there, such a gap to be filled. And it's like, you know, I, I've always been, I'm wired to, you know, look at systems and break them down and figure out, like, how do I get better at each individual component? And that's going to make me better at the whole thing. That's, that's how I did well in school. That's how I did well in engineering. And it's how I, you know, got good at coaching pretty dang fast. And if I can put that into a system and I can teach people, like I can make them much better in a much shorter period of time than, than what they'll go through on their own. Just that trial and error process that takes years and years and years to pick up, you know, finally enough experience that you can do the stuff that we need to do on the platform quickly. And it's like, hey, we can break all that stuff down give it to somebody in a list and yeah, it's not going to make them a great coach instantly, but it's certainly going to shorten that timeline. Yeah, speeds up the process. Yeah. And then yep. you've got the other end of the spectrum where you've got all these kids who are in exercise science programs in school who all lead to some other, you know, four alphabet letter certification, none of whom come out of it after four years plus of education and hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans, understanding at all how to actually coach on a platform. Like how bizarre is it that you would go get an exercise science degree and have no idea what a squat is or how to teach a squat, like like or how to perform a correct squat and why and why it's performed that way? Like those are super basic things, but but you know what I one of the things I had to learn and one of the I won't even say what um what the organization was, but when I took a multiple choice test for one of my certifications that I've had, I had to know how to read an EKG. You know because we do that a lot. <laughs> as strength coaches. <laughs> but they never taught you how to how to coach a squat. Like how yeah. it's just bizarre and so it's yeah. like those other tests you know they've always reminded me of just like like potpourri on jeopardy. Right. It's like here's a bunch of random shit yeah. that may or may not be somewhat related to the field. Yep. But we want you to know it. Yeah. Yeah, your your approach has been very vocational, which has kind of gotten a bad rap. But it actually, uh, the vocational approach can create people who can uh, troubleshoot, diagnose, repair each HVAC systems, and teach people where to put their hip when they squat and and that kind of thing. And it's and it's and it is working. And I think Reed here is somebody that it has worked for. Reed can make people yeah, what move was your right. Experience, Reed, like when did you did you get in at the very beginning? Uh, yeah, I did. And uh, yeah, it was interesting because to hear Bill's perspective on all this, because I ended up kind of being the perfect, kind of like a really good target audience for what his vision was, because I just, I was like, the only people I'd coach was like my mom and a few buddies at that time I was coaching online. And it was like, well, how do I, you know, you need experience, you need to see reps. How, how do I do, how can I do this? It's like all my people are in, you know, online, I'm trying to get people to come to the house and do this. Like, how can I best accelerate this? Then I see this post for the camp and it's like, well, you know, that's, that's perfect. I want to do that. And just, you know, orders of magnitude difference in before the camp and how I came out after the first barbell camp and same thing for the Academy. It's like, you know, there's all these formal things you think, it, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And the Academy is really set up to, to highlight 
all those things for me. So, you know, it's one of those things where people think, well, I, I feel like I know every, you know, you know, I, I think I know pretty well, like, you know, what can, what can I learn about all this? It's like, well, you know, you don't know what you don't know. You get in there and you get, you know, by week five, you're getting hit in the mouth with stuff that you've probably never seen before oh. in, the, in the academy. So just, just awesome that to hear Bill's vision on that and see that, you know, my experience coming to that very inexperienced in the beginning and just was able to plug in right away and start getting, you know, go to the, go to the in-person camps, get the reps with the people in person, the online academy, able to get in there and step through things very methodically each week, it builds on itself uh, each week and just come out of there a substantially better coach than I went into it. Yeah, so so Reed uh, got involved, uh, and Reed actually came to our first two first two coaches camps in Chicago before we even launched uh, through Barbell Logic. You know, we were basically running things on a, on a Facebook group, and that'd been around for uh, eighteen months or so at that point. And Reed had been involved in the Facebook group, and we um, you know we launched that first camp, and like it was one of those things. It's like, well, I'm, you know, hopefully this will sell well. And we list it live, put the listing on our Facebook group. Five seconds, five seconds later, like Reed has signed up. <laughs> and he did that on the first one and he did that on the second one too. And it's just like, okay, like here's a guy that's serious about this stuff. And like, you know, honestly, that was the first thing that we noticed about Reed at the very first camp. And I can, I can still remember doing the exit interview with Reed. You know, we sit people down at the end of these camps and say like, look, you know, here's, here's where we think you're at. Here's what you need to work on. The thing that that really shined through with Reed the whole weekend and then the second camp that he showed up is just like how enthusiastic he was for coaching, how much he wanted to get better at coaching so he could help other people. And, you know, when he when he came to that first camp, like he wasn't a good coach. Like he said, like he didn't even know what he didn't know yet. But that's what, you know, that's what the camp and the academy is so good for for anyone that wants to get better. It's like, yeah, if like you're just getting started we're going to let you know what you don't know yeah. and we're going to tell you how to go work on it. So it's, it's been really fun to watch Reed go from somebody that like Reed, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I think you said you like the first time you ever coached someone was at that first Chicago camp, right? Uh, outside of my mom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like the first time he'd ever coached a stranger was at the camp and we've had several other people in the camp and in the Academy since then that, that are in that same position. So to see Reed go from somebody that's just like, you know, really wet behind the ears, but also really enthusiastic and somebody that, you know, we could tell generally wanted to get better at this stuff, go from that stage to like, you know, watch him grow, watch him grow, watch him grow. And then he joins the Academy when we launch and he wasn't first to sign up for that, but he was, he was close. He got in, got in group number two <laughs> and yeah. then just to see him, like he knew what his weaknesses were and to see him attack that kind of stuff. Like it's super rewarding for me to, you know, see Reed grow and see him get better as a coach. And like, at this point, he's like, I, I tell these guys all the time, the interns that we've had for like more than a few months, it's like, I honestly forget that you guys are still interns. They're that good as coaches already. Like yeah. I trust them a hundred percent to coach any of my clients. And they're really good coaches by the time we bring them on as interns, because, you know, a guy like Reed that comes out on knowing nothing about coaching goes through the process understands what he needs to learn and then attacks that giving them, you know, a after we give them the tools that they need, you know, it's amazing how, how well and how quickly they can grow and just be like super well-rounded coaches by the time they come on as interns. Yeah. Everybody talks it's about, we need more reps. You need to see a lot of reps, you know, and I've been doing more and more in-person coaching and hoping to, uh, because I just want to get better. I always want to get better. And the truth of it is, once you've done some of this, you have to do 90% more to see something new. Yeah. Like, I, I, I yell, uh, knees out, ass back, uh, 63 times a day. Okay. And, uh, and I'm always just looking for that new, interesting problem that I can learn about and help somebody with. And Get a new cue, and, new and, tool in your toolbox. Yeah. And it's just, if you're doing that, if you're just trying to, to get that, last 20 percent of the coaching skill and ability and you just try to get it organically just you know by people swinging the door and coming in the gym man it takes forever it really takes forever to see something new although i have an absolute 
cripple coming in tomorrow, and I'm very excited. <laughs> I, that's, that's, the way, that's the way I get now. I was telling the last camp that Bill and I taught, I was like, I get super excited when I get the weirdest people now, right? Like, oh, oh so-and-so's, you know, blind, or so-and-so only has one arm, or, you know, whatever. And you're like, yeah, yes. Yeah. Give me some of that. that that's... Let's learn some new stuff. He, so, he, he emailed me and he's like, I'm a quadriplegic and I've been burned over 90% Wait. of my body. No. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I, I mean, like, he sent me this horrific story. You're going to use that Joe Rogan halo thing he puts on his head and just work his neck because right. he's a quadriplegic. <laughs> Guy's going to have the strongest neck in the world. I'm going to like lay him on a yoga mat and then just try to kick him over and have him resist that. <laughs> 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 No, so bad. The, the, no, the guy's got a lot of problems, and frankly, the medical community has just given up on him. Sure, um, that's the problem. And, and I think we can, I think we can help him. And he's like, he sent me this. Well, you're like, going to improve his quality of life. That's right. He, he sent this last ditch email. Like, I don't know, man, but I got to try something. Yeah. Well, he's going to get better. It's going to get better. So, uh, but but when you do the coaching academy, uh, we've curated a lot of fuckery. So that you, so that you can yeah. see, you can see problems that it would take you a very long time to see, uh, in the wild. It's it's really easy, you know. Think back to when I first started that. It's like I was I was already being really critical of myself. Of, you know, I don't have any coaching experience. You know, I'm I'm coming in here and now looking back on it, it's like in a way, I think that may have been you know a blessing in disguise because I didn't have to unlearn how to do. It. I wasn't unlearning right. any bad habits. Right from the beginning, I was learning the best possible way to do it. I mean, from the, the most basic things possible, I'm, I'm watching somebody do an overhead press and they, they got them to freeze. Uh, they interact and they said, Reed, what can you not see where you're standing right now? And I was standing directly beside him. Couldn't see his wrist. Like what are his wrists doing right now? It's the little things like I'm, I'm so hyper-focused. It's like, I'm so nervous. And it's like, where are you standing? You know, just all these, all these little things like that. So just learning the basics right out of the gate. Uh, so I, I really hope people don't get discouraged because they don't have experience because better to start out the right way from the get-go. Yeah. I think it's been really interesting the way supply and demand sort of make the efficiency of the model sort of clean itself up and, and meet the market what the market demands. And so it's been interesting how to watch Bill start this process on a Facebook group and then really, really work this curriculum over until the curriculum is so tight for the academy. And the thing about the academy is awesome because – it, it is, an, is a full-blown education program online in six months. And, we, and, and it's not you – know, we, we've had a bunch of people who have gone through the academy who have an exercise science degree or, or something in that field. And, like, I learned exponentially more in the six months under the academy than I did in my four years in an exercise science degree. Right? Well, it's because, just like Scott said, we, we, we've – we've pulled out all the bullshit that doesn't need to be in there and we focused on the things that matter. And then, and then the advantage is, is that to go to that, a massive advantage is that to go to that, that four-year school, first off, you actually have to find the location that teaches it. They're going to teach you a bunch of bullshit and it's going to cost a ton of money. The academy is extremely affordable, much shorter in time, and you can do it from... In, from anywhere on earth, right? Like we've got a guy, I, I know we have a guy in Qatar doing the thing, or Qatar, 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 whatever it's called. Um, you know, like an American military guy. They're all over the world, they can do these things. But then Bill was, was honest enough to say, like, hey, we can get you all of this knowledge and all this education, and we also want you to coach in person and film yourself coaching in person and upload the films of that the video of that for the academy, but you still need some hands-on experience. And so that's where these camps came from. So so now Bill offers these these coaching academy camps that you can go to and they're pretty intense. They're a, they're a two-day intense camp where where you do a ton of coaching and the staff walks you through exactly what you should be doing, what's expected of you, that will stop in the middle of a set and we'll say, stop. Like, what, what are you not seeing? Or what did you see? Or what did you not see? Here's what I'm seeing. And let everybody get tons of hands-on feedback. Um, I, I love that, that he's done it that way. And then with the introduction of the certification with the, the professional barbell cert, you know, one of the things Reed was talking about was the first time you went to that camp, that first day especially, dude, I know you were so nervous, right? Yeah, there's, I mean, because <laughs> there's, two, there's two types of rednecks. There's the ones that talk too fast and the ones that talk too slow. And I'm on the too fast. So we get through we get through the first squat progression and that my platform coach said, 
you nailed the points, but you have to slow down. Yeah, you, I bet you'd be a great auctioneer. 100%. Yeah. There's there's meth rednecks and there's beer rednecks. <laughs> That's what it is. Well, the, the the thing that brings us together is if we have a few beers, we both of those types of rednecks are still going to need subtitles. <laughs> like a reality TV show swamp people. You just you just start enunciating words becomes less and less important as you as you crush them. <laughs> so we we kicked around this idea with um with the certification coming which we we've done the podcast on with the professional barbell coaching certification about having it be a completely separate weekend. And then we started to realize, well, you know, if we paired it with the camp so that that attendees had the option to attend the camp only on Thursday and Friday or the certification only on Saturday and Sunday or go to all four days, I think the real advantage of going to all four days is that you get to work out a lot of those nerves the first two days. You get to coach in front of the same staff who's going to be evaluating you on Saturday and Sunday but you get to do it not for a grade on Thursday and Friday. And so you're going to come in on Thursday. You're going to be real nervous. You're going to talk too fast. Blah, 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 blah. And, and, and then by the third day, all those kinks are going to be worked out. And then the other part of it is you're going to leave on Friday night with this exit interview that Bill does. And it's going to sit these, these attendees down and say, hey, here is what we saw the last two days. Here's what you're good at. Here's what you're going to need to work on. Here's what you're going to need to show us the next couple of days in order to get the certification so you know exactly what's expected of you and so it seems like um some of these certifications in the industry have been have been either shrouded in secrecy or are just full of a bunch of bullshit where you're like you have to learn how to read an ekg or read a vo2 max or you know the kind of stuff that we never do on a daily basis and both are wrong and what bill's done is he's come in and said look i'm going to pull the bullshit out I'm going to teach you how to do this in the education process over a six-month period in an academy for a very affordable rate. Everybody comes out of that as a better coach, even if they're not ready to be a professional barbell coach yet. And then we've got these camps where you can refine and hone your skills, and then you can test those skills at the certification weekends as well. And it's, it's been cool the way that's all sort of just worked out. Um, it's been, man, and it's been win-win for all of us, right? Because it's supplied the vast majority of our new coaches at Barbell Logic Online Coaching has been supplied through the coaching academy and through our interns um, who have come in and, and become professional barbell coaches over the last couple of years. It's been really, really fun. So, I think a really important point too with the academy, uh, you know, with the with the curriculum is even just by proxy. If you go through it, even if you just show up to the calls and listen, you're still going to be you're still going to come out of there a better coach. But you really get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. So there's a there's a very big range. There's a wide range every week for every assignment of how much work you can really put into it. And if you, if you slack, you know, any of those weeks, you know, life happens, but if you don't put in the work, you're really, you know, you're really doing yourself a disservice uh, going to that Academy. Cause you get a lot more out of it. You know, even, even just not just assignments to your, to your, you know, to your coach, it's how well you interact with other people in your group. You, you've got other people there, leverage their experience, you know, you're asking for videos of their lifts. There's, there's a ton of stuff encouraged to share in between the group. And if you don't do that, they, you, not only are you impacting yourself, you're impacting your group as well. Even even beyond just working with within your group and the academy, it's like, you know, we got this big Slack channel. You know, there's there's 200, 200 students in there now and 20 some staff coaches. And it's like, here's a community that if you if you are interested in getting better as a coach and you're not taking advantage of that community, like what what are you doing? And like, you know, just what Reed just said, he's like, I get emails all the time from people that say, like, have been through the academy and say, like, well, you know, I didn't get selected as an intern right away. What do I need to do? And it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, I got to check and make sure this person actually went through the academy because I have no idea who they are. Like, I've, I've never seen their name before. And that's a problem. Like, you've never asked a question in, like, one of our general channels. You've never replied to a thread. You've never participated at all. You've never posted videos of you coaching. Uh how hard are you really trying? Yeah. You know, the, the people that get selected as interns and it's not, you know, it's not just based on like how hard they try. Obviously there's a, there's a multitude of factors that we look at, but one of the big ones is like, how much do you want it? Like, are you indicating to us that, yeah, I really, really want to be a coach. Cause we, get, I'm sure, I'm sure Matt and Scott get emails all the time too. Like you get these emails from these guys like, man, I want to work for Barbell Logic so bad. You know, I want to do this. Like, I want to be a professional coach. And it's like, okay, 
show me. You know, you don't say that to them, but like, you know, you give them, give them an opportunity to prove themselves. Some of them are going to step up, but a lot of them, like, you know, do you hear from them again three months later? Right. No, they just, they just kind of go away. Yep. And it's like, okay, that person didn't really want it or they wanted me to hand it to them and we can't do that. What are you doing with your coaching practice now, Reed? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the online stuff's going very well. Uh, actually, the first, uh, I forget, I don't, Bill, I don't know if you remember the date of the first uh, first camp you put on. I think that was in October as well, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe a little earlier. But went to that and found out that girlfriend was pregnant. Yeah, see. And, and ended up buying a house in January. And moving out, leaving her there. Leaving her there. <laughs> <laughs> Moved her, her and the eleven-year-old and five-year-old in, and then we just had a new baby uh, in July. So and he's a he's a hoss too. He's like a he's a hand and size baby. <laughs> it's like little Uncle Fester. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's so it's been you know it's uh, as a client said it's uh, I kind of skipped novice and intermediate programming went straight to advanced family programming. <laughs> so. Yeah, so with the with the move, you know, moved to new house, new locations. Uh, I did lose a little bit of the, the in person stuff I had going uh, with coaching, but doing it in a very good, got a lot of momentum going uh, with the internship. Uh, doing now, it's that's awesome, and it's been really cool how you know you get the internship, and it's so competitive now, which is awesome. You know, I I was lucky that I got involved like right as things were starting along because now it's one of those things you go through, and it's like, what what, what I've even been selected into this? Like, there's so many people going through it now. It's so competitive. It's awesome. But once you get into it, you know, you get to see so many reps and seeing how the even that uh, program has just changed over time, you know, with how quickly the rotations are going, development of like a identifying a lead intern for the groups. Uh, so as a lead intern, it's like not only am I worried about my own clients that I'm coaching now, I'm also going and checking on the clients in my other people's group. So now I'm an extra critical, you know, it's more perspective on well, if I identified somebody else is doing something like this, before I say anything, I better go check my own stuff. You know, I better make sure that you know that I'm on right. So, just tons of opportunity to do that. So, the the internship's been going very well, and and you get paid now too. You get those yes. you know, great big fat stacks of hundred dollar bills coming your way as an intern. Rolling in the money, I, I tripped on some way in here. Just rolling it. So, so that's a, that's another thing that's been really as a massive benefit to me. And to Barbell Logic as a business is that this has created this um, winnowing process, so I don't ever have to interview someone for a job. My my interview for the job is how did you perform in the academy? How do you if you did really well and you get selected as an intern? How do you perform as an intern? Our interns coach our club clients, right? So it's like you said, it's a it's super competitive to try to become an intern to get selected as an intern. And then you, you coach our club clients, which, which is really the same sort of service you get at Barbell Logic Online Coaching, but you get, the, you get that service from an intern, a hand-selected intern, rather than a, a full-blown professional barbell coach. And, uh, and then if you work really hard as an intern and you do well in your online coaching and we can see that your service is good, and you've got good interactions with your clients, you've developed good rapport with them, and then you get your professional barbell coaching certification, then it it makes it much easier for me to hire someone like you. I don't have to, I, like, I think interviews are bullshit, right? Because you can sit down and ask somebody a bunch of questions and they can just knock the questions out of the park. And then you hire them and start paying them a salary, start paying them some money. And then they, they, but they don't, you, you haven't seen their work ethic. You can't ask questions that really identify work ethic very well in an interview. And certainly there are some things that you can ask, but the best way is just like, well, I've already seen you as a student. I've seen you as an intern. And now I know you have a professional barbell coaching certification. Like you, that was your interview, right? That's, and that's made it so much, so much better for me. And then on the, on the coaching side, the quality of interns who are, who are coming into barbell logic are so high that it's driving up the standard for our current coaches, and another sort of benefit that I never expected to see, although it makes sense now that you think, now that I think about it, like Scott is just starting to teach his first academy, is how many of my coaches that work for me as, as, as full-blown staff coaches who have taught an academy come back and like, I learned so much in that academy. Like, I am such a better coach 
having taught it. So, you know, Reed, you were talking about like the amount of work you put in is how much you get out of it. Well, think about the person that's actually teaching the class. And a lot of these, a lot of these guys haven't had anatomy and physiology and biomechanics and physics for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years since college. Right. And so now they have to re kind of relearn that stuff. I remember the first time I started teaching in public school, they, they hired me to teach algebra for a lady who had a, a, a baby really, really early. So they hired me for the entire semester. And, and I went to, I had a history degree and they're like, can you, can you teach algebra? And I was like, sure, I can teach algebra. And I was like, <laughs> I haven't had algebra in nine years. I don't know how to teach algebra, but you know, I did, I just came to school every morning and I read and learned and read the textbook, which oddly enough, I'd never noticed as a student, you could actually just read the textbook and it teaches you how to work the problems. And then I do the problems. And then I, by the end of that semester, I had mastered algebra because I had taught it. And so it's been a tremendous benefit to our staff as well that they are becoming master coaches now because they're teaching this information. Uh, it's been really, really cool. So there's, it's, it's wild, like the fingers of, of sort of fringe benefits that have occurred in the business that were really never expected. We just needed more coaches. We wanted to see more coaches. There were very few people who were coaching people correctly in the world. And Bill saw the need for that. Like, well, we can actually speed up that process and get more good, high quality coaches in there. And, and all these other awesome things have come out of it as well. It's been super cool. So one of the questions that seems to come up quite a bit uh, with regards to the academy and also the certification is like, are you guys worried about creating competitors? You know, are you going to create too many coaches? Um, and it's it's an interesting question. And I, you know, I, I think the answer is flatly no. Uh, we're, we're not worried about creating too many coaches because what happens to our industry as a whole if we've got you know, double the number of really good coaches that we have today. You know, what, what happens to the, the notoriety of, of what we do, you know, it, it goes up and like, you know, go from a hundred coaches to 200 coaches and then 200 coaches to 2000 coaches. Uh, you know, at some point, you know, if, if we have 500,000 professional barbell coaches, yeah, we've got too many, you know, it's going to be hard to find, hard to find clients. But we're nowhere near that, and we'll probably never get anywhere near that. I don't even know how many we'd have to look at look up how many certified personal trainers there are in the world. Um, but when you when you start creating all these coaches that are genuinely very interested in helping people, and they're very intelligent and they're articulate with what we're doing, and they're very skillful. You know, they can legitimately help you get stronger. They can, you know, help your back feel better. They can help you get up out of the chair so you can go to the bathroom and all that stuff. And it's like, you know, we're, we're not just creating people that are going to make, you know, make people strong to go deadlift 600 pounds. Like we're creating an army of coaches that's going to go out and improve quality of life. That's going to, going to decrease the number of, of doctor visits on average that somebody has to go to you know, get people off their meds and stuff like that. And we can't, we can't promise stuff like that and we shouldn't, but we all know as barbell coaches, that's the kind of stuff that happens. Yep. When you apply a good coach to a willing client, magic happens. Quality of life goes up, changes their life. So no, we're not worried about creating more people that are, that are going to do amazing things like that. That's exactly what we want to do. That's exactly what our industry needs to be doing. And, and it's not just coaching too. It's like, I, you know, I went through this, like it made me uh, better at critically thinking about things. It's like, you know, how, how much, one of the, one of the side effects of going through this academy and being exposed to the internship and all this stuff. It's like, I am so critical of every other profession and certifications now, because you think about what the leading certification is or what the leading experts are on stuff in the fitness world. And now I understand just how wrong they are. And in most cases, negligent. It's like now, so now I'm, I'm much more critical of things way outside of the coaching world. So just a, again, kind of a proxy benefit to all this is just really, really thinking more critically and, and going into the weeds on this stuff and trying to find out the truth. You have to keep, keep doing that for until you're about 32 and then you got to put the blinders back on and then you'll be like me because if you just keep asking those questions, you'll end up like Hamburg or Hannon. No truth. There's no such thing as truth. It's just like whatever <laughs> works for you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, Another question we get a lot too from people that are interested in doing this is like, okay, you offer the coaching academy, which is an online education program. You you also offer the camps. 
there's master classes that we do periodically and stuff like that. Like which one is best for me? Where do I start? And really that's a hard question for us to answer without knowing you. But generally speaking, you probably need all of it. You know, if you're, if you're in the beginning stages or even, even in later stages, like trying to get across that finish line, all of those products are going to help you. So the, let's talk about the education program versus the camp. You know, the online education program is to, uh, you know, it's set up to give you a lot of background, not just on the academic stuff, but on the practical aspects of coaching, like knowing what you're going to encounter on the platform, knowing all the different ways to screw up a squat, what they're going to look like and how you fix them. And that gives you this big list, all these tools in your toolbox so that you can then get on the platform and do it. So conversely, the camp is more focused on what you're actually doing on the platform. You know, what's your presence like? Are you standing in the right spot? Um, can you quickly identify, figure out what priority you need to fix all the different errors that you're seeing, come up with cues that are going to work really well and deliver those cues in a timely manner? That's what we work on at the camp. So they're very complementary. You know, if you, if you can, I, I would advise people to, to do both, you know, go through the online education program, go to the camp when you're done, read, read what is, you know, what's your experience been like having done both now, you know, do you feel like you could separate them and say like, you know, definitely one is better than the other? Not at all. I mean, completely, completely complimentary. It's, it's really, you know, there's, it's, it's fat, you know, talk about the, the actual going through the academy, it's, you know, there's, it's facts and, uh, you know putting things and, you know, how, how you use this practically. And there's, you know, getting the theory of things and just, you, you know, on, on your weekly calls, you get really deep into the, you know, really into the theory of things. You don't just, this is what it says. And we believe it. It's like, well, what if it was like this? Or, you know, if a client asks you this, how'd you defend against this? So the actual bar, the actual camp, the in-person camp is a, a great way to kind of practically apply a lot of the stuff mm. you learn because it, how can you really appreciate how much you're, if you know nothing about anatomy and you're watching somebody squat on the platform and you see them doing something funky on the way down, it's like if, how much better equipped are you to interpret what's going on, think of a cue and deliver a cue if you now know the attachment points of all the primary movers and how those joints act? Right. So, you know, you can't really say one to one to that, but that definitely, you're definitely equipping yourself with the best tools to perform the best when you're in front of the client. And that's, obviously very important yeah so the academy the academy ends up being very comprehensive and then you get to take all that comprehensive knowledge and skill acquisition and actually get to practice that in real time on a platform and even though at the camp you're not being tested for certification there's still there's nerves there's like you're not just performing in front of um this your your a, a mentor coach or some some master coaches who are the staff, you're also performing in front of the entire room of other academy people, <laughs> people who are going through the same thing. And so it sort of forces you, you know, it's like that, uh, if you ever played golf, the toughest golf ball to hit is the very first one because all the people standing there at the clubhouse behind you watching you swing, right? And then after that, like nobody's there. When I get to hole two, there's nobody standing there watching me. No big deal. But that first drive on hole one, right? And that's kind of what this does. And so, uh, yeah. I love it. Yeah, and, and, and don't let fear get in the way of this stuff because you think about, you know, if you're if you're signed up for the academy and you're in the class and you're too embarrassed or nervous to, you know, one of the reoccurring themes is to post a video video of you coaching, you know, in your team Slack groups, you guys can discuss things. If you're if you're too scared to do that with five, six other people that are there for the exact same reasons you are, then how's that gonna translate to how you perform in front of the customer? You know, if you go to these barbell camps and you're too nervous to you know perform around a room full of people that are there for very similar reasons, then how's that going to translate to when you maybe for one-on-one -on -one with just the client, you know? Yeah. So it's re really embrace the discomfort, keep stepping into those things that are uncomfortable. That's one of the benefits to having this pipeline set up the way it is. Yeah. That's, that's kind of one of the funny things with the, with the online program is like, you know, the, the limit there is like, we don't get to be with you in person. So we have people send their videos in of, of them coaching, their clients or their friends or whoever they can get their hands on. And 
it's a, it's a funny thing when you turn that video camera on, you're used to coaching in your garage and nobody's there. And like you turn that video camera on and now you've got that audience, you've got that audience around the first hole, like Matt was talking about. So our recommendation there is like, (laughs) if that really makes you nervous, video all of your coaching. That's right. And then go back and watch it because that's going to be a learning process for yourself. But by, by the way, we still experience that, right? Like at the seminar, Bill, you and I will teach or whoever the staff person is, we're going to stand in front of all 25 people or however many people are going to be there and we teach them how we teach the squat. And even though I've taught the squat tens of thousands of times, my heart race is just a little bit higher when there's 25 people who are looking up to me and are going to try to mimic the thing that I'm teaching them, right? And I would assume it probably does the same for you even though you're you're sort of wired like Spock. So maybe not. But <laughs> it's you know it happens for everybody, you know? Like if I coach or or like when when the staff when all of us are, you know, you and me and Andrew Jackson and Nikki Sims, we're all training together and I'm coaching you or I'm coaching, you know, any in any of those other coaches on staff, like you know, it's a little more it's like you got a little more skin in the game. There's a little more pressure there because you respect the person you're coaching so much not just as a client but as a coach. And so that stuff's normal, you know? Well, if someone is interested in pursuing this, where do they do, where do they go? What do they do? Where do they send their questions? All that stuff. B. Hannon. Uh, so they can, they can either go to our Barbell Logic website and click on learn to be a coach and uh, find all the information there. Or if you want to go straight to the source, you can email me at B. Hannon, H-A-N-N-O-N at barbell-logic.com. And I'll, I'll hook you up. I'll give you all the 411. What's coming up uh, on the calendar there? Yeah, so the, the big thing that we got coming up is our uh, combo coaches camp slash certification seminar. And that's November 7th through the 10th. So we've got the coaches camp on Thursday, Friday, the 7th and the 8th. The certification seminar, which is the exam portion on Saturday, Sunday, 9th and the 10th. Uh, you know, like Matt talked about earlier, like you can sign up for one or the other. You can come just to the coaches camp. You can come just to the cert seminar, but we recommend that you do both, you know, get, get the best bang for your buck. There is a discount for signing up for both. Um, if you're at all interested in, certainly if you want to go through the cert seminar and, and test and try and earn the PBC certification, the camp's going to help you out. It's going to ease your nerves a little bit. It's going to fill in those last second questions, you know, it's not just the platform stuff, but we're going to have tons of Q and a time. If you got questions about, you know, anatomy, physics, whatever, um, you know, we'll, we'll answer all those questions to the best of our ability. And we're going to try 100% to make sure that you're ready starting Saturday morning. But when we flip that switch, it's like test time. Now you're on your own. So if you, if you want to come, you're interested in coming, come to both for sure. I think that's the best, best way to do it. Best deal. In St. Louis, and you can sign up for those on the website. Um, and yeah, there. I, as of the time of this recording, we're about seventy percent sold out, seventy five percent sold out. So, um, and I guess if we're sold out by the time this thing runs, we'll just not run this part. <laughs> or we'll record a post roll with when the next one is. So, but this That's is the right. only one you can get into in two thousand nineteen. And uh, after that, you're gonna have to wait till early two thousand twenty to get in uh, for the next camp and uh, cert. Well, there is another Barbell Logic podcast. You can send your questions to questions at barbell-logic.com, and you can send your questions about th- this subject again to B Hannon, B H A N N O N, at barbell-logic.com, and Bill will answer your Bill will answer your questions about the uh, coaching academy and the trade, and uh, you know, birds and the bees, um, personal finance, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, whether physics, physics questions, physics yeah. questions, that'd be that'll, good. That'll get you uh, bumped to the top of the list of emails I'm going to answer. Yeah. Send that stuff. <laughs> so if you just put to... physics in the subject line and then you ask <laughs> about the birds and the bees, you're, you're probably going to get an answer because you, you learned how to game the system. Yeah. Copy me on those. Cause I want to see how sweet William answers. Thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you in just a few days. Lightweight, lightweight.